Lillian Gray and today we are making a chicken sculpture with air dry clay. Before you guys watch this video, please make sure you watch my previous video on the basics of air dry clay. It is vital that you guys understand how to make slip, how to roll a slab, how to wedge your clay before we even start. So make sure you watch that video and then come back to make your chicken. Okay, so step one, I've wedged my clay. It's nice and malleable. I'm working with Dada's air dry clay. It's by far my favorite air dry clay um, brand. And I'll put a link below where you guys can shop it, um, where you guys can buy it. Um, so this clay has already been wedged and I then proceeded to roll a slab. My slab is big enough to accommodate a normal dinner plate. So don't worry about the plate, you can use a new one because the clay can just wash off. It won't damage the plate at all. And we're now going to be placing this plate on the slab. Okay, so we are going to be placing our round plate on um, my clay slab. I've got my little cutter. There's various things you guys can use. I'm using a sharp pin. Um, you can use a toothpick or a kebab stick if you want. And I'm just gently going. If you guys rush this step too much, um, you're actually gonna get quite a jagged edge. You don't want that. So just go slowly and consistently. Then, we are also going to, um, sorry, I also just want to make you attempt that we are working on cloth. Um, cloth is awesome because it really absorbs um, the clay and your clay won't slip around. After I have cut deep enough and I know that I have um, penetrated all the way through to the cloth, I am removing the excess clay. Um, remember this clay you can still use, um, it's awesome, so I'm just going to bundle it together and just put it aside to use later on when we get to the detail of our chicken. I'm now going to remove the dinner plate and I now have a beautiful circle. Okay, now when we make sculpture it's important to make, a, it's called armature, so that is the inner structure of the sculpture. What it does, it strengthens our sculpture and it also allows us to use less clay. So for this chicken, we definitely need to create a ball structure that we're going to be using to build around. So this is how I'm going to be making my inner structure for my chicken. Okay, so what I'm using here is I've got paper towel um, and I'm using old telephone pages. Now I know these are like from an ancient time and hard to find, but you can also use like brown paper that's a bit of a sheen and a gloss. Um, and I am going to scrunch up. You can also use newspaper if you want, but the glossy paper for me works better. Um, I'm going to be making a ball. I put my glossy paper over. And I gently wet my last page um, because you just want a bit of a wetness. Um, the clay is going to make it wet anyway, but you need to provide the clay with space to um, shrink when it's drying. So don't make your ball too hard. Boys, I've often seen you guys do it. You make this powerful, strong ball so you can hit your sister with it or your other classmates, don't do that. It just needs to be loosely scrunched because when your clay starts shrinking, when it's drying, it needs to have a bit of a bounce. I hope that makes sense. Okay, so this is how we just make our inner structure. I'm going to be placing my inner structure on my cloth and I'm now going to wrap my circle around this circle. Okay, I'm just going to be cutting out um, some wedges so that when it folds over into the circle, there's space for my clay to join. Um, just tiny pizza slices, guys. Um, three is more than enough. And now I'm going to wrap this around my ball. Alright, so now I've got the basic structure of the chicken. Um, it's very important to remember whenever we join clay, we need to scratch on both ends and we need to use slip. Everywhere I've made a wedge, I am going to scratch and really join my clay. I'm also just going to use a little bit of slip um, and add it in there to make sure my clay joins properly. Okay, I flipped it around. Now, at the bottom of my chicken, 
it's going to be super important that you guys don't close this all the way. The entire idea is on day three when this has dried for a bit, you want to be able to take out the paper. So you need to be considerate of that. You can't have um, the entire structure closed. Um, your clay will also crack. Um, so you don't want to do that. Leave enough space so that you can at least get a scissor in there, cut the paper smaller if you need to, or pull it out slowly um, as we progress. So I've now basically made a little sweer for my chick's body. And I'm just going to make sure that when I flip this around, I've smoothed it all and it's exactly the way I want it. So you might just gently press with your hands, make sure it's round everywhere. You can also take a sponge, just wet it slightly. Remember, you do not want a mud bath. And you can just start working off um, your edges so your chick is nice and round. So make sure you're happy and that it's like kind of circle oval but you kind of want to look from the top so chicken is an organic shape so it doesn't really have to be perfect right um we're making like a vintage chicken for your mom's kitchen and, or your own kitchen and it doesn't have to be completely perfect but um just make sure when you look from the top that it's kind of try and get it symmetrical we are now going to start building the head the neck and the tail Okay, so now for all the fun part, this is my favorite part, adding personality to my creatures. I'm going to break off some clay from the clay that I removed from my circle when I made my slab. And basically sculpture is just like drawing where we work with our basic shapes, but now we're also adding, um, you know, just the 3D element, but it's still the basic thing. Whatever you're gonna construct, you're gonna construct out of the five basic shapes, your circle, your oval, your triangle, your rectangle, and your square. So I've just added a bit of water to my hands and I'm rolling my circle. My head is solid, but doesn't have any structure inside. The head isn't that big, so we don't need to save on a lot of clay. And I'm making my circle round. It's a bit like making a snowball or a mud cake. And I'm just making sure I've got my head where I want. Okay. Now, remember, whenever we join something, we have to scratch and we have to apply slip. So that is going to be my next step, joining my head to my body. Okay, I am going to scratch where I want my chicken's head. Um, it's important that you guys don't put it too much to the front because it might fall off. We want it to plonk and have the center of gravity right above its body. I'm also scratching the bottom of my sweater that I've made. And I am now going to apply my slip, which is like my glue for clay. And I am going to join my chicken head. A bit too much slip. Okay, so I've joined my head. Your next step that you're going to do is you're going to take some clay and we're going to make a worm. Okay, I'm now making a, a worm, which the correct term is a coil um, in the clay world. So we're just making a coil and I'm going to wrap this coil around my chick's neck. I already have a lot of slip, right? And I'm going to be joining my chick and I am going to scratch, really joining my clay merging it now into my little body right and i am going to with my finger work it in into my chick's body okay now to work this off nicely you want to dip just your sponge into a bit of water Please, guys, make sure you get all the excess water out because your clay can really become 
uh, very very sloppy and I am just smoothing out these lines and making sure my head joins quite smoothly with my chick's body. Remember when you're working you want to get rid of all your air bubbles because air really is the enemy of clay. It makes our clay um, crack when it starts drying because um, your clay has a shrinkage ratio. So the shrinkage ratio for air dry clay is almost 30%. Um, so you need to really get rid of that air. So there's no air pockets that's going to make your clay shatter when it dries. Ta! -da! This is my little sculpture wheel. I love this thing. Um, and I'll put a link down below where you guys can buy it. This is optional. You really don't have to have this. It just makes my life a lot easier. But I'm going to plonk my little sculpture on my wheel so that I can now really start turning it. And I can swivel from head to bum. And what also works is, I don't know if you guys um, maybe can get a, you know, a Lazy Susan, um, which they usually put on a dinner table. Um, you can use those as well. Um, they work really well. Okay, we are now going to swivel around to the bum and the same principles apply. We're going to build a tail and we're going to scratch at here and finish off our tail and add some slip so that it is glued. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to be placing my tail here. Once again, I want my center of gravity to really be on the sculpture and not here hanging down like a horse's tail. Um, so we're going to be scratching and now I'm going to take some extra clay um, and really start making tail feathers. Okay, so I'm taking my excess clay that I've got and I kind of want to split it into equal pieces. And I want you to think of, once again, we're working in basic shapes. So I am going to, if your clay is a bit wet, like this, oh, a bit dry, getting a bit dry, just wet it again so it becomes malleable again. We're thinking in basic shapes and I am going to be making like it's almost like a big raindrop or teardrop and that is what I'm making so it's just a circle with a triangle and those are going to be my tail feathers so the whole idea now is to really make three of them just wedging it between my hands and using my body as a shape, right? I'm going to make um, three smaller ones now. So I'm just going to also divide my clay into threes and I'm gonna make slightly smaller tail feathers. going to be the structure of my tail three big ones and three small ones okay so now that we've made all our tail feathers we are going to join them um, and same principle as always we're gonna apply some slip um, remember to also scratch the feather when you want to attach that and I am going to start with my big feathers so I first just want to build the structure um, and I'm going to bring this in and then bend this over to really start making some plumage now you will notice here and there's a reason I'm doing this that I'm making a touch here and here okay so this means you're gonna have to scratch down here as well and you're also going to need slip. So it's basically touching the clay at two places um, so that I am sure this tail is not going to fall off. Um, and I am just starting in um, going to do this one and then the two side big ones. Remember in art, using an uneven number is always better because it keeps our eye intrigued. As soon as we've got symmetry, our mind switches off and we want to visually engage the viewer. So we always use odd numbers um, to create asymmetry uh, on purpose. So, okay, I'm just going to join these guys. All right. 
right, I've attached this now and um, you can take your sponge and just uh, rough out some of these edges um, before you join the other feathers on top because then it's quite tricky getting in there with your sponge. So we're just going to shake its tail feathers a bit, <laughs> make sure it's uh, nice and smooth. Um, okay, and now I'm happy and I'm going to add my second layer, which is now the the medium size feathers same thing scratch 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 slip 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 scratch 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 and stick and the second place where it's attaching remember there you also need a bit of slip and just a bit of scratch So I have attached my second layer of tail feathers. I've also made three little smaller drops, which I'm just going to add here on the side to really just have that, you know, plumage feeling, um, you know, um, a chicken that's proud of its tail feathers. That's what we want to create. Okay, I've kind of done this now. I actually think I need two more small ones. So I'm just quickly going to make that. Okay, so we're creating everything um, by using basic shapes. So we are going to be making um, our beak, which is just a little triangle. It's kind of how I'm making my triangle. And that's going to be my beak. My bill of my chicken is literally just two circles. So I'm going to be rolling two um, balls. And I am going to squish them together, which is going to give me the bowl underneath the beak. And I am working them in, making sure that the joint, they're joined quite nicely. And make sure they're joined quite nicely at the front and the back. I like creating all my pieces and planning properly before I start working on the face. Because I just think you work much faster. Um, so beak, bill, and now for the comb, we're going to be doing a comb. This is my little secret to doing these kind of things. I make um, lots of little balls. Remember we're working with odd numbers, so I'm going to make five. And I am now just going to squish them with my thumb making flat little discs and now I'm going to arrange them so that I can start making this comb for my chicken so by doing that I'm just going to squish them into each other making sure they join properly and I'm going to flip it around make sure I do it on the other side as well And I now have all my little um, sections for my chicken's head. So I'm going to move on to my chicken's head now to really make him amazing. First of all, I'm going to look straight on and I'm going to make sure I've got the median line of my chick. So the median line is like the middle and I'm just going to make a little indent here. Once again, if you don't have this uh, stick, this pottery stick, you can obviously use a toothpick um, or a kebab stick. I'm going to make sure that I've got my comb of my chicken going all the way down. That is where I plan on joining my comb. So once again, I'm planning. I plan on putting um, my beak here. And I'm going to put my bill underneath that. So I have to scratch there. And I'm going to kind of imagine where I'm going to have my eyes. So there's lots of different eyes that you guys can make. For this exercise, I'm just going to make two little uh, dots, which I am, let me show you from the front, I'm going to swivel it just a little bit like that. Just make sure I've got my eyes. Okay, so now let's start um, by, what am I going to start? I think the best place to start is I think with a comb. 
So I'm scratching now where I want the comb to join. I'm also going to scratch the comb and I'm also going to apply slip. You can see the slip is there really joining it nicely. I'm kind of using my nail like this to make sure I get this edge where it's joining really merged with each other and worked in nicely. Making sure I get all the air out, making sure that um, my comb is there to stay. And you know, I wonder if this is where the word comb over comes from. Okay, I think I'm happy with that join. And I think he looks really, really cute. So we're now going to join our bowl. So always plan so that you know what comes underneath you do that first, right? So you're not going to do your beak first because that's going to be very tricky. So we're going to scratch our bill at the back. We're going to um, add our slip. It's almost like a little heart, I just realized. Hmm? Looks like a little heart. Okay, so I'm going to plonk up my bill and I'm going to work it in making sure it joins properly. Remember, we want to get rid of all the air and we want it to be one. Simunye. All right, um, I've added my bill and I am now going to add my beak. So I've kind of rubbed in all my scratches I made for my beak, so I just need to redo those. Yeah, that beak's a bit massive, so I think I want to cut it smaller. So I'm just going to use my tool um, to make my little triangle much smaller. Yeah, that's working. Okay, so, and I'm going to work in my beak, smoothing it out, making sure I'm happy, happy, happy. Okay, now I've got my beautiful little chicken and I'm going to add a lot of little details if I want to, right? This is not a fun part where you really get to decorate. So I'm just going to give him a tiny little nostril so he can breathe. Um, if you want, you can gently cut the beak line and just create that little beak line. Um, I am also going to give him some dots. And this is how we make the dots. What I like using is like old crayons. These are called twisties. Um, and when you use the front, you get such a nice circle. And when you use the back, you get a bit of like a star. Um, but you can go around your house looking for stuff that you can use to make pretty dots. But I'm going to indent and give my chicken some beautiful spots. There's more decorating stuff that you guys can do. Um, if you want, you can add some texture to your feather. So your feathers, I am just laying this in and creating a bit of a feather texture. So cleaning up your clay and making sure everything is neat and tidy is a very important part of the project. It really saves a lot of time when we're starting to finish off our clay because you're going to have to sand much less. So what I usually use is I use like an old brush um, just to take away whatever fluffiness there is. If there's little crumbs from how I've scratched, I just remove all of those things. I also use the brush to just get in at places where my finger maybe couldn't have gotten in. But you really want to take away all the little fluffy irritations because it's much less work later on. And remember finishing well. You've spent all this time now making this um, chicken. So by just finishing it well, it really just propels your project into the next level of uh, making it look wow wow wee wah And not making it look completely homemade, but actually professional. Making sure all my lines and my little textures are nice and crisp 
exactly the way I want them. And whatever else there is that you want to brush off or fix, um, now is the time to do so. And there you have it, this beautiful chicken sculpture. Um, I'll tell you something fun about chickens. Chickens are actually quite vicious. I was raised on a farm and, you know, chickens can actually fly a little bit and they can jump fence if they want to. Um, they love eating insects and even small mice. So we used to keep them on the farmyard to actually eat all the scorpions. They love scorpions and they're like smart enough to not eat the poison sack, which I find is like amazing. Um, so yeah, this is how we're going to make our chicken. And guys, remember, this is your project. Don't copy me straight away. Um, make it your own. If you want to make a steampunk chicken, make a steampunk chicken with some goggles and some gears. If you want to make a Fortnite chicken, that, I don't know, goes out at night and spray paints some walls, go and do that. If you want to make a chicken with a mask, you can do that. <laughs> um, have some fun. Make it your own. Okay, it's super important how you store this chicken. So um, I'm actually going to remove it off its little um, sculpture swivel. I'm going to be placing it on um, a little polystyrene container I've got. Do not place it on plastic. It's not good you can use cloth or paper towel or something like that if you want to line it um, it's just much better because it absorbs the the moisture that the clay is going to lose while it dries I am now going to wrap it in plastic I usually use two plastic bags so that I do it from the one side and then from the other side so there's really no um, you know like crazy air coming in and we want to keep it in those bags for at least three days. After three days, we're going to tear the plastic off. We're going to open the cupboard and let it air a little bit and then slowly dry. It must take about a week for this thing to dry. Don't let it dry fast. Never put your clay in direct sunlight. Um, it's going to be a crack, snap, crackle and pop party in there if you do that. Once I've wrapped it in my plastic, I am now going to put it in a dark cupboard for at least three days. And I hope you guys enjoyed this lesson on how to make a chicken sculpture with air dry clay. I'm Lillian Gray. Be sure to give this video a like and subscribe.